5.55. Jenny of Avalon, 4.40. Beswizzled, 6.50. Got out to 10, now back into $7. Bloom and Crafty, 8 out to 13, then back again to $9. And 17 into 13 lately for Trust in Rosie. This mounting yard is brought to you by Sani. Moving tomorrow, today. So into the yard we go, eight minutes out from race number two, a maiden over 1,100 metres. We'll start off with the one, and that is Bloomin' Crafty. Second at his last three starts. Could he be lucky today at start number 47? Well, that's the key. I mean, you look at the form guide and you say, oh, this horse has been runner-up his, you know, his last three. And, um, yeah, but you don't realise that uh, they've had plenty of opportunities or plenty of goes or throws at the stumps. Uh, but in form at least, and, um, you know, I thought that has to be sort of in the mix. We know there's one, or we think that we feel that there's one smart one there and the wide barrier is not ideal, but at least, uh, you know, he's in good form. On to the two, and that is Fortitude. First up here, hasn't raced since July, but didn't really show a heat last week. No, we've breakfast. seen two runs so far, and well held, a nine-year-old as well, so no thanks. And now trying to break through at start number three as a nine-year-old, so they've persisted with Fortitude. Three, Jess de Monte, uh, and seven-year-old trying to break through at start number eight. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty thin race, Ed. Uh, third run of the prep. There was good improvement on the quick backup. That might certainly help, um, but it needs sort of at least the similar amount of improvement first to second run as there was last time. Let's go on to the five, and this is your best bet for the day, Vermentino, who's a half to group one place get at Den Magic. Yeah, it just looks um, well above average, as I mentioned earlier. The jump out was terrific with the right stable. Uh, I think he looks uh, he looks a pretty handy son of extreme choice. We've seen a lot of that progeny go good. Doesn't have the race experience, but he was very professional his jump out. And if he lives up to that, I think he's struck a, a very winnable race. Six is out. Seven is Jenny of Avalon, who's joined the Luke Oliver team. Yeah, um, jump out a couple of um, jump outs ago was, was decent. New stable, looks like she's shown some improvement. She's a daughter of Dundeal. Her, her form doesn't read anything special, but there's ability, it seems like there's ability there. Ada's just called me Bella, a four-year-old having her first start. I thought from the jump outs more was needed. Yeah, and I think we can just let that one go around, uh, let her go around for the time being. Uh, she's a four-year-old mare and she'll benefit a lot from the experience. Nine's out, ten's another one from the Luke Oliver stable. This is Trust and Rosie by Trust and Agast. Uh, she's had five jump outs leading into this. Yeah, a little surprised that she wasn't shorter. You know, you see some... Um, oh, look, she's $15, I think. I think the favourite will be very hard to beat, but, you know, maybe if you wanted to insure on another run or have something on one or maybe a Quinella or a different type of bet type, she could easily run in the money. I thought her work was good. OK, bit of value then. 13 on the tote at the moment. 11 is winter time, a daughter of Lucas Cranach, who was beat nearly 17 lengths at her one and only start. That was back in September, so not a, a lot of time since then. You'd like a, a bit of a push in the market. $71 isn't really there. 12 is Witness X. Um, on the form, couldn't really have an earlier form, but uh, wasn't too bad last time out. The last couple have been better. Yeah, that was behind Lily LA. She sat in behind and just kept whacking away, I suppose. Uh, wasn't a bad run. Uh, but she's look, she's been $81, $91 her last two, and today she's shorter, so that, that is somewhat, encouraged, somewhat encouraging, but... It's also, I think, a reflection on some of the depth in the, of the rest of the runners. Yeah, there's not a heap of depth to the race, really, as you've said. Uh, the swizzled for Lockie King, and Griffiths and De Kock, another debutant here. Yeah, I didn't mind the jump out, but market didn't uh, hasn't seen it that way. Mind you, with all the support for the favourite, uh, it's easy to see why. But oh, I thought, oh, look, she's um, she's shown enough in her work that she'll run better than some of those that have had the race experience. 14's a scratching, 15 is Paper Dragon. Uh, second up here, bombed the starter to rain last time out, but did make up some ground late. Yeah, fit horse, and there's been a couple of runs this preparation which have been OK, and that might be good enough to fill a minor spot here. Yeah, second up from a bit of a, a freshen up. Uh, what was the top four here, Hattrick? Oh, the best of the day, but, um, you know, the, uh, well, it's not a major surprise that uh, vermentino has been well supported, but... You know, he sort of came in a little bit shorter now, getting a dollar ninety with bet three six five. But I thought trust in Rosie might be a bit of overs because I thought some of the others had queries. Uh, Beswizzled and Jenny of Avalon are the remainder. This market update is brought to you by bet three six five. 
So, Clint Hutchison and Travis Noonan have labelled this as the best of the day. Vermentino, the punters, followed through to two to a dollar forty-five, and then they've let it get out to a dollar seventy-five. Four forty about Jenny of Avalon, whose tighten up was at five dollars earlier on. Seven dollars about Beswizzle, Bloom and Crafty, nine dollars thirteen. Trust and Rosie, same price for Paper Dragon. Witness X is at twenty-six dollars, and Just Call Me Bella, one of the outsiders, at forty-one dollars. So they're heading to the gates. Uh, Let's go back on track and join Matt Stewart. And Hamilton's not only a good place, Matt, obviously, for the racing, but also for a bit of fishing. Absolutely, it is. Uh, that is exactly right, Ed. It's a magnificent little joint up here, that is for sure. And uh, Johnny Sadler, your old boy, just texted me too, mate. And uh, Tommy is uh, number one in the family at the moment uh, just because uh, he's doing a bit of work with the old boy. So uh, there you go, mate, for the, uh, the Sadler family. But I've got little Dean Larson. He's been kind enough to join me for the Ma Eustace team. And uh, Dino... This horse has been certainly well found in the markets, Vermentino. A well-bred uh, horse by Extreme Choice has obviously shown a fair bit at the jump outs and the trials. Yeah, it certainly has. And he's a nice type of horse too. Uh, obviously, he's well-bred. Uh, Tim's taking their time with him. Uh, he looks terrific today and uh, he's bred very well. And, uh, mate, uh, been well supported from a monetary side of things. Uh, has the stable got a bit of an opinion of this fella as well? I, I'd imagine so. Like, early on, he was, he was working really well. Um, so he's trolled good too, so I just, I'd imagine a few other people were looking at him too. First starter, Mars, Simul Bloodstock, uh, they usually have handy horses, don't they? So I suppose there'd be a few people on the ball and just thinking, well, this horse should just go around and, and win. But, you know, you, you watch the car racing on Sunday. It's, That's it's right. Never, you're never there to hit that winning post. Absolutely. What's the plan of attack to be in the first half a dozen or the you'll back be in half? The first, you'll be in the first forward, yeah, first forward and, um, and make his own luck. Now, let's move along to uh, to race number four, uh, another one from the Ma Eustace team, uh, Nick Star, uh, coming off a couple of thirds, uh, been around the money, and uh, looks like a nice race. It does, actually. Uh, I took it to uh, to Tura. The track didn't sort of suit it there. It was a bit firmish, uh, quite tight, and the jockey said uh, a bigger track. So I'd imagine a bigger track today, being Hamilton, uh, she should have a long run in and should, should be uh, thereabouts. And uh, we move along to race number six. Miss 10,000, I thought, was uh, a little bit unlucky at Tarang last start. Yeah, I took it to Tarang as well, and um, they went fairly slow up in front, uh, suited the, the front runners. Uh, she was probably back a bit mid, mid worse than midfield, and uh, she hit the line good, but just took a long time to wind up. So today, Hamilton track, uh, she should be winding up late and uh, be thereabouts. How good's the stable going at the moment, Dino? It's flying. They are flying. Yeah, the team's doing a good job uh, all over the place. Uh, obviously, Crawford's gone to Cranbourne. Uh, so the team's flying Cran Cranbourne now, uh, Fingal, we've got Ballarat, and it's just getting bigger and better. Now, what about the birthday boy? Uh, how was the 40th celebrations on Saturday night? Did uh, you get up and uh, bust a move with Johnny Stevens <laughs> on stage, mate? No, no not quite. I was, um, I was at the races Saturday at Packenham, so I was, I was glad to be sort of getting home fairly early and <laughs> hitting hit the bed. You might have been smart. Your best yes. coming up here, mate, do you think, Vermitino? Has to be, yes, for sure. For sure. He's, he's showed the most, and he's, he's a nice horse. He's well put together, and... As the Timor Bloodstock, they've got nice horses, so looking for him today. Good luck here, Dean. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, great stuff. Dean Larson does a great job at the Ma Eustace team, and uh, the stable, as I said, is absolutely, uh, well, it's airborne at the moment, that is for sure. Let's head upstairs now to Trav Noonan for his call of race number two. Thanks, Matty. Yeah, he's very short price favourite here, Vermentino. He's been rock solid with the Victorian official price. Top flux of a dollar fifty-five. He got as low as a dollar forty-five, and now holding his price at the dollar fifty. There was sort of two forty shopped about him last night, but that's also got a little bit of deductions to come with the scratching of nine Rath Carly this morning. But he looks pretty promising of what he's done at the jump out so far, Vermentino. And you'd imagine if he can bring that form uh, from his recent Cranbourne jump out, he's going to take a power of beating here. So they are starting to move them in here for race number two, the Ace Radio Maiden Plate. And here's Bloom and Crafty coming up into the barrier stalls. Been racing very well of late on the Western District Circuit. But not a lot of, lot of luck. She tries very hard. Mare from the Jamie Barry stable. Now up comes number 13 here, B Swizzled, on debut for the Griffiths and DeCock team. Combining with Lockie King, of course, that combination a couple of weeks back winning the Cranbourne Cup with King Magnus. He comes, she comes up into the barrier stalls. Just call me Bella. 
here for Jason Benbow. Horse at $41. Trust in Rosie on debut here for the Luke Oliver team. $15 on the Victorian official price. Has shown some ability in her jump outs. And Just Call Me Bella comes up and we await Fortitude. He'll be the last one and will be set for a start. For race number two, the Ace Radio over the 1100. Vermentino, the short price favourite, drawn the middle of the line and away they go. All jump reasonably, Vermentino away fast. Going with him is Paper Dragon, and up along the inside is Jenny of Avalon. And they got away then from B Swizzle, who's in fourth spot, and then Jester Monty. Followed by further back to Winter Time. On the outside of it is Trust and Rosie, and then Bloom and Crafty. Further back then in the field to Witness X, who's towards the tail of the field from Just Call Me Bella. And last of all is Fortitude. So it's Vermentino, the short price favourite, cross to the front and leads as they come down the hill about 600 ago from in second. In spot on the outside, Paper Dragon, then Beswizzled. Fence on the, in fourth spot, then is Jenny of Avalon from Bloom and Crafty. Sh uh, shunting out with a run is Jester Monty, and further back then to Trust and Rosie. Coffee gets busy on the favourite at the 200. He put up two lengths, Vermentino, from Paper Dragon, and then followed by Jester Monty and Beswizzled. But inside the 100, Vermentino going well. Money bang on, and he'll win on debut. Vermentino, a smart horse, won it by two and a half. Paper Dragon, second. Third close, Witness X or in right up there, Beswizzle, then followed by further back then to Trust in Rosie, Jenny of Avalon, uh, who was close up with also uh, finishing just in behind those horses was Just Call Me Rosie. Uh, there's a couple others to come across the line there. Uh, they were followed by Witness. Uh, Witness X was in that photo for third. Just Call Me Bella, making some ground bloom and crafty. Towards the tail of the field was Winter Time. A couple of these just pulled up quite quickly. And also back there with it was maybe Jester Monty. So Vermentino, the favourite. Getting the job done here for Harry Coffey and Kieran Maher and David Eustace on debut. The son of Extreme Choice, a three-year-old Bay Colt by Extreme Choice out of the mare, Magic Zefta. Moves by Viscount and he's won in convincing style in the end. Crossed over to lead for Harry Coffey and made a good thing of it. And he's won quite comprehensively in the end. 104.02 for the 1,100 metres. And the margin two and a quarter by three and three quarters. The first three across the line, 5, 15 and 12. Witness X will get that third spot from 13 Beswizzled, who will run fourth. It's the time then, 104.02 for the 1,100 metres here at Hamilton, which is pretty good going. Uh, the record here is 102.680, so he's only sort of a second and a half outside of that on debut. Dean Larson is representing the stable here for Kieran Maher and David Eustace, and they'd be smiling, no doubt about that, Matty, after a very impressive debut from Vermentino. Yeah, this little fella, Dean Larson, he's always got a smile on a dial, that is for sure. And uh, that was pretty impressive, Dean. Uh, you know, we spoke about it before the race. Uh, a couple of nice jump outs and that. But as we said, uh, you know, Hamilton can be a little bit of a tricky track, but uh, just put all that to rest, it was a great win. Yeah, that's nice for sure, for sure. I was sort of, sort of a bit worried at the 400 when he had a sort of niggle at him. But uh, I, was, I was happy how the horse found and uh, he gave him a hit with the whip and he kicked away. And it was good to see a margin from, you know, from second to third as well. Sort of broke up a little bit. And uh, second and a half outside the record, obviously, it's pretty, it was going pretty good. And they ran some time too, you know, like, so yeah. uh, that's always a good sign. And they spaced kind of third and fourth, didn't they? That's right. And then it's always good to see him kick away like that, especially first starters. And he's a stallion, so he could have been thinking a little bit too, but it was good to see him hit the line. And we've got to thank uh, Darren Thomas, one of the owners, and plus the other owners for being very patient with this horse. Um, Dave Eustace and Kieran Mata, they'd like to take the time with their horses and prepare them well. And when they go to the race, they usually fire first up. And well-bred too, you know, the extreme choices. How well are they going at the moment? Oh, they're going really well too, yeah. If somebody, if somebody turns the TV on, they're winning somewhere in Australia and um, no, they're going quite good as well. And what about uh, little Harry Coffey, mate? Uh, you're an ex-jock yourself. Uh, he's a beauty, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he gave him definitely gave him a good steer today. He's always riding well. Uh, Carl does a good job behind the scenes and uh, strapped the horse today. So it's good for, good for the whole team, team, uh, team effort.
Good on you, Dino. Well, I'll tell you what, certainly a horse to follow, Vermentino. Great debut win. And uh, as I said at the top, uh, the stable's absolutely flying at the moment. Yeah, Congratulations. Thank you, Maddie. Thanks, Maddie. Thank you. Good on you. Little Dean Larson, of course, from the Kieran Mart. David Eustace team as uh, he just makes his way over. And uh, Harry Coffey. Uh, he's in good nick at the moment too. And I just saw his old man, Osti. He's a ripper. He's got a uh, nice little team down here at Hamilton this afternoon. And uh, not too many meetings you go there where Harry doesn't ride a winner either. He's uh, going fantastically well at the moment. He's uh, Harry Coffey as he uh, makes his way over. And I'm keen to get his opinion of uh, this fella too because, uh, Harry, that was a, uh, a really impressive debut, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Chasing the mic, sorry. Um, no, nah, he did everything right. Uh... He's a bit new still though, so when I say he did everything right, there's improvement there. Um, he pinged the lids, and I just wanted to cruise across and be smooth, but I was going to get caught a bit wide, so I just had to use him, crossed him, got to the front, and he actually had a play coming down the hill. He was very on and off the bridle. Um, gave him a little squeeze with my feet just around the bend, and he responded, and then when I uh, started to stoke him up, he really responded. So. He's a playful bugger, um, but that's because he's got a set of knackers in between his legs. So um, good ability there. Got the kill today. And, yeah, he'll go on from this. And the sign of a good horse too, Harry. Uh, you know, they've got gears. And, and this fella looks like he might have a couple. He does. And um, whenever horses got near him, he pinged his ears right back. Very competitive horse. So that's a good sign for him going forward. Um, and uh, just countering back, I just thought he is a playful sort of lad. Maybe a set of blinkers down the track would really sharpen him up, but um, when they're winning like he did today, you don't have to worry about that stuff. And just let him learn and go through the grades, and that he will. So um, makes my job easy riding nice horses, and he was one of them. Geez, you're going well at the moment, mate. Uh, you're riding a few for the Mar Eustace team as well. Uh, things are just uh, going sensationally well. Yeah, I play um, second fiddle to Johnny a little bit, and he, it was good he had the day off today for me to get this one. So, um, no, I just make the most of my opportunities and hope that ones like this come along. And when they do, it's quite enjoyable, your job. So that's why we come to work when you uh, get to ride fast horses. Congratulations, Harry. Always good to talk to you, mate. And uh, that was a really impressive victory. Thanks, Matty. Yeah, Harry Coffey, he's a beauty. And uh, Vermentino, certainly a horse to follow. That is for sure. From the Kieran Mar David Eustace team, they are absolutely going and doing wonderful things at the moment. We're going to take a break on Race Day Live. Come back with more right after this.